A few months back, Slackware passed its 30th birthday, but unlike Slackware, the second longest running Linux distro, Debian, is still very much a part of modern Linux discourse, whether it's Debian directly or its various offshoots, most notably Ubuntu. And on September 15th, Debian 2 passed its 30th birthday. But Brody, I hear you say, Debian actually started on August 16th. And yes, you are correct that it was announced on August 16th, but I wanted to do a video for the first release, 0.01, on September 15th. We are going to do the exact same kind of video we did for Slackware, a deep dive into its very early history. Now, it does share a couple of little similarities, but for the most part, it's entirely different. Now, let's get into the meat of it and stop stalling. So Debian was first created by Ian Murdoch. Now, even though both of his parents were from South Indiana, he was actually born in West Germany in 1973. At the time, his parents were there to support his father's research. Shortly after Ian was born though, they moved back to America. After graduating high school, Ian attended Purdue University in an attempt to obtain a Bachelor of Computer Science. During this time is when he created Debian. This next bit is where the similarities start and end with Slackware. During this time, there was a popular, popular in the context of the 1990s, Linux distro called Soft Landing Linux System, otherwise known as SLS. This was marketed as a gentle touchdown for DOS bailouts. It was by far the most complete Linux distro of the time. The problem is the maintenance wasn't very complete, and it had this reputation for being really buggy and really poorly maintained. So, Ian being like a 19, 20 year old kid thought, hey, I can do it better. So he did it. So on August 16th, 1993, Ian sent this up to the Linux Usenet. Fellow Linuxers, this is just to announce the imminent completion of a brand new Linux release, which I'm calling the Debian Linux release. By this point, we hadn't really settled on the term distribution yet. This is a release that I've put together basically from scratch. In other words, I didn't simply make some changes to SLS and call it a new release, which I feel like might have been a shot at Patrick because of Slackware. I was inspired to put together this release after running SLS and generally being dissatisfied with much of it. And after much altering of SLS, I decided that it would be easy to start from scratch. The base system is now virtually complete, though I'm still looking around to make sure that I grab the most recent sources for everything. And I'd like to get some feedback before I add the fancy stuff. Along with a bunch of promises about why Debian is going to be better than SLS. Now considering he's just some random kid in university, he didn't have a distro under his belt already, they're very much just promises. But there are some interesting takeaways here. Debian will contain the most up-to-date of everything. The system will be easy to keep up to date with an updating script. We'll definitely talk about the updating script in the base system which will allow complete integration of upgrade packages. Debian will contain an installation procedure that doesn't need to be babysat. Simply install the base disk, copy the distribution disk to the hard drive, answer some questions about the packages you want or don't want installed, and let the machine install the release while you do more interesting things. Basically, an automated installer, which at this point wasn't a guarantee. Debian will make Linux easier for users who don't have access to the internet. Currently users are stuck with whatever comes with SLS. Non-internet users will have the option of receiving periodic upgrade packages to apply to their system. Basically, upgrade install CDs. And Debian will be extensively documented more than just a few readmes. Once again, this also wasn't common at the time. Now, technically, 0.01 .01 was the absolute first release of Debian on September 15th, but this was considered a pre-alpha. The first public release wasn't until 0.90 on the 26th of January 1994, so it was in development for quite a while. At this stage though, it still wasn't considered a full release, it was only considered a public beta. 
Now, the first actual release, release version that was considered like an actual complete ready system wasn't actually until June 17th, 1996. This wasn't 1.0, that was never released. Actually, it was 1.1. Now, what's the deal with the name? Why Debian? Debian is what is known as a portmanteau, basically a combination word. So Ian's girlfriend at the time, later wife, and then ex-wife, was Deborah Lynn. Debian is a combination of both of their names. Deborah, Ian, Deborah Ian, Debian. Now, alongside that first public release, 0.90 in 1994, we also saw that upgrade script, better known today as DPKG. This was initially written by Ian as a shell script, later rewritten by Matt Wells, Carl Streeter, and Ian in Pearl, later rewritten again by another Ian, Ian Jackson in C. Also, we saw the release of a very, very important document, the Debian Manifesto, saying things like, Debian Linux is a brand new kind of Linux distribution. Rather than being developed by one isolated individual or group, as other distributions of Linux have been developed in the past, Debian is being developed openly in the spirit of Linux and GNU. A lot of the distributions of the time were following a BDFL model, like Slackware for example. The primary purpose of the Debian project is to finally create a distribution that lives up to the Linux name. Debian is being carefully and conscientiously put together and will be maintained and supported with similar care. It is also an attempt to create a non-commercial distribution that will be able to effectively compete in the commercial market. And if we look at the state of Debian today, I think they achieved that. Distributions are essential to the future of Linux. Linux would not be where it is today if distributions didn't take over the entire landscape. But also, Debian Linux will be distributed on physical media by the Free Software Foundation and the Debian Linux Association. We'll get to the FSF stuff in just a moment, but before then, Ian Murdoch is not the only important character in the early history of Debian. Another one is Bruce Perens. At the time, Bruce worked for a little indie company. That company being Pixar. Yes, that Pixar. So you might remember if you've been around in Linux space since basically the start, that Debian's mailing list was hosted on Pixar.com. And Bruce and other members of the team had Pixar emails. This occurred until March 31st, 1996, where it moved from Pixar.com to NetG.se. The old address at Pixar.com will forward mail to the new address. I find it so bizarre that Debian, of all projects, was hosted on Pixar.com. Like, it's obviously because Bruce worked there, but it's so weird to me. Now, the mailing list is not the only Pixar influence that Bruce had over the project. Also, the names of the Debian releases. The first name release was the first actual release, 1.1. This was named Buzz, then Rex, Bow, Ham, Slink, Potato, and this one's going to make it really obvious, Woody. All of the Debian releases are named after Pixar characters. Even the unstable branch, Sid, is named after Sid from Toy Story. From the very start, Debian wanted to be an open project that anybody could get involved with and anybody could run. As such, Ian Murdoch was never the BDFL. In fact, he only ran the project for the first three years, stepping down in 1996, being replaced by Bruce Perens. When Ian stepped down as project leader, some really big changes happened. During that very early period of Debian, Debian was actually being sponsored by the Free Software Foundation. And when Bruce took over, Richard Stallman had this to say, the FSF is no longer sponsoring Debian. Two years ago, the FSF decided we wanted to distribute a version of the GNU system using the Linux kernel. The planned GNU kernel, the herd, was not ready. It's still not ready today. <laughs> and Linux was. 
people were starting to combine Linux with the GNU system to make runnable, complete systems, and these were clearly useful. We wanted to get involved with supporting and distributing such a system. We wanted an integrated system that was easy to install, not a collection of sources that each user had to compile. We also wanted a system that was not associated with any particular commercial company. Ian Murdoch had started to put together such a system called Debian, and he sought the FSF sponsorship. He hoped that integrating Debian would serve as preparation for integrating the GNU system, and he hoped to be involved in that job. We agreed that the FSF would sponsor Debian development, and for part of the time, one year, Ian Murdoch was on the FSF full-time paid staff. The FSF looked forward to distributing Debian on a CD-ROM. We originally hoped that Debian would be ready for a CD-ROM in early 1995. Like many software projects, Debian took much longer than expected. It still isn't ready. By this point, I think Herd was like 12 years late or some insane number like that. A delay is not a disaster, but in the meantime, a more serious problem has arisen. This March, Ian Murdoch stepped down as leader of Debian development, saying that he was too busy with school to do the job properly. The people now working on Debian do not want the FSF as a sponsor. They've said that the FSF can use Debian on an as-is basis and can make suggestions to them, but they have rejected any closer relationship. The present developers have also changed the name of the project. They now call Debian a Linux system. It is still a combination of the Linux kernel with a variant GNU system, but unlike Ian Murdoch and the FSF, they do not wish to affirm this in the name. Basically, they were not calling it GNU Linux because... Even at this point, no one wanted to use that name. Bruce did reply to this, among other things saying, the Debian group is in sympathy with FSF's political and philosophical goals. Our problem was with their technical direction. We've decided to come to an amicable end to FSF sponsorship so that we can allow all developers to participate in Debian as peers. FSF is invited to participate on the same basis at the same level as individuals, schools, organizations, and companies that have put a lot of work into Debian. Basically, Bruce didn't want to have them be in this, you know, privileged position with the project. Now, Bruce only ran the project from 1996 to 1998. But during this time, some incredibly important documents were drafted. The first of which being the Debian Free Software Guidelines. The second being the Debian Social Contract. Both of these are still in use today and have seen minor adjustments over the years, but for the most part, are pretty much exactly the same. He also led the conversion from the old A out format to the ELF format we still see today, and pretty much every distribution out there, and also created BusyBox to fit Debian onto a single floppy disk and created a new installer. When he stepped down from the project in 1998, he was replaced by Ian Jackson. As I said before, Ian Jackson is the reason why DPKG is now written in C, but also during his time, Debian GNU Herd was first released. Nowadays, it's still continuing, but GNU Herd is in the state that GNU Herd is. The more important thing is during his time, the Debian constitution was ratified. This has seen a lot more changes over the years, but it's still mostly the same document. This includes things like the powers of the project, how voting should be done, and other important things about governance of the project. Following Ian, Debian was run by Wicket Ackerman. Now, during the release of Debian 2.1 in March of 1999, we saw the release of a new package manager, what we know today as the advanced package tool, or more succinctly, just apt. Also, in the following year of 2000, DebConf Zero, the very first DebConf, was finally held. Now, during this early period is where we saw all of the Debian logos, and you might think you know what the first Debian logo was. I thought I did as well. Turns out, I was completely wrong. From the old Ian Murdoch blog, this was the first logo by Etienne Suvasa of the Free Software Foundation. It was an idea by Richard Stallman. It is a baby GNU holding a basket and sucking its thumb. And with the stomach here, it kinda looks like Richard Stallman. I'm very happy that this is not the logo that Debian is known for. 
Following this, some sources claim that this logo is the next logo. I haven't found any sources on the Debian website saying this, but others do, so I'm not entirely sure. What I do know is this logo was definitely used. It's really, really ugly. And I'm so happy in 1999, Debian held a logo contest and Raoul M. Silver's design won. This brought us the Debian Swirl, also sometimes seen with a vase. And the rest is basically history. But whatever happened to Ian? Well, in 2006, he was the CTO of the Free Standards Group and the chair of the Linux Standards Base. When these two groups merged, they became the Linux Foundation. At the time, he remained the CTO, leaving in 2007 to go work for Sun Microsystems and work on Open Solaris. After that, he had various other jobs along the way, with his final position being at Docker Inc. This was in 2015. Now, the next part, there is a lot of conspiracy stuff around, and I don't want to get into it because you can get into that stuff yourself. But in 2015, after being detained and released by San Francisco police for a break-in and drunken behavior, he was found dead of self-asphyxiation by hanging. I don't know how to spin this to be a happy ending, because it's simply not. Nobody really knows what happened, and as I said, there is conspiracy stuff around why that occurred. So besides that point, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope that if you are a Debian user, you like Debian, that you learned something new about Debian's history. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video, do let me know what you liked about it in the comment section down below. And if you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, and the pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and here's to another 30 years of Debian. Hopefully, the project is still around.